Hey folks, Max from Woodsman's Finest here. You might actually know me from productions like Fixing to Fix My Fix Crawl or Honey, I Shrunk My Groups. But uh, in all seriousness, I still owe you guys the third part in my series about my favorite metal ILF risers and bows. So um, today we're looking at the WF21 by CD Archery and the Bosen RCS Carbon foam recurve limbs so stay tuned and come along so welcome folks to another episode in my gripped tip series talking today about the WF21 by CD Archery and the Bosen RCS limbs um, just quick word, intro, very quick word. I know you guys don't like the rambling too much. Um, it's been a while, I'm sorry, I've been like very busy with life. Uh, just came back from guiding for moose in uh, the Rockies of Alberta. I went to um, uh, Saskatchewan in the spring, guiding there, um, and I just didn't have a lot of time for archery in general. Um, unfortunately, um, because life, different duties here in Austria as well, just kept me very busy. But I'm really happy now that it's fall, it's a little bit cooler. I'm actually getting back to it. And I wanted to take the opportunity to actually show you a few bows um, in this series. Um, or rather, in fall now that I have a little bit more time. You see from my groups that it's been a while. Um, so this is not to blame on the bow or the equipment or anything. It's actually tuned pretty well if I'm doing my, um, my part right. So um, just an affiliation, as I do in the very beginning, affiliation to any of the brands. Um, I bought the WF21 here in Austria from a guy who got rid of his archery equipment. They're very rare here in Europe. It, this might actually be the only one in all of Austria, I'm not quite sure. Um, and I actually got these limbs sent by Bosen. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape or form. I'm giving my honest opinion, but maybe you also guys, you guys understand that I can't just like buy bows left, right and center just to do these, these videos. Um, so I'm sometime approaching um, brands that I'm interested in because I think the value is good. Um, to see what they're all about and I'm giving you an honest review um, that you're gonna get from me today as well okay so without further ado let's pull this arrow and get to it and by the way folks so I'm not really sponsored by them but there is this one platform that really made archery fun for me again and that I've been absolutely obsessed with for the last five, six years, even longer. So. Don't tell it. Alright folks, let's do this a little bit properly. Um, let's start out from the grip to tip with the riser. So, what's to say about the W21? Um, first and foremost, the WF19 um, and the WF25 were out first and the 25 light, I think. And they have a lot less deflex, right? This is the most probably significant thing to say about this riser, so I put it right up front. Um, the design is very straightforward um, in the way that it has is very neutral. From the hardware where the detent of the ILF system is actually sliding in, if you take a straight measurement to the, the other one on the bottom, um, whatever distance between the deepest part of the grip and that line, that's the amount of deflex. And like I said, 21, 25, very little. So on the 21, they actually measured on the length of the entire riser, they actually went up with that measurement. Other than that, um, from the grip on out, what did I do on the riser? You can actually tell that um, there's an arc core grip on here that I did something to. I completely recarved it, um, basically with knives. It's my job, you know, carving with axe and knife. Anyway, so 
I recarved it so there's only basically the bottom that is kind of like a um, a rest for my palm obviously is, is still there everything else is cut away so I'm getting the maximum amount of deflex out of this and I like this grip angle the most so I'm doing this with most of my hardcore grips um, you know anyways a negative part of this for me 27 inch draw more deflex um, the riser might actually be laying there a little bit more without um, the ability of me to torque it however I'm getting a little bit less performance out of it what else did I do? I mean, you can see that the riser is gorgeous in the way that it's actually a super nice Cerakote job in this like OD green. I really like it a lot. Um, weight on it, by the way, is um, four pounds and four ounces, I think, which is about two kilograms. Weight on the limbs, just to get this out of the way, is per limb, it's 185 grams, which is about six ounces as far as I measured it. Six and a half ounces or something, very light limbs. Anyway, so. Um, for a rest, you know that the WF19, 21, 25 all come with this hump on it, which is like pretty much, um, I think, a proprietary design that has probably been copied ever since, or at least in, in the amount of hump they do, they're unique. Um, but I always mount a nap center rest on all of my bows, and even though I'm shooting this crawling with, um, you know, like this is a 66 inch bow overall, I, I string walk on this which I usually don't do I usually shoot a fixed crawl um, you know the, the the big innovation in my opinion that the push archery at least made very popular and widespread even though they might have not come up with it but they made it by basic, basically a household name anyway so I string walk this one so um, I could have used like a rest and a plunger and all of this but I'm too dumped for that and I do love to tinker but I like tinkering with my form more than anything so Nap center as it is, very easy to exchange. So this is still like an ode to hunting, if you will. Um, I don't like to install anything on any of my bows really that I wouldn't take out like in a more, you know, high, high exposure, you know, high consequence environment. Coming further out, there's obviously um, tapped holes, like two burgers, um, two burger holes. Um, so you can run, of course, a rest in a plunger. Um, two holes for a quiver or a sight. Uh, most people would probably use a quiver on on this setup um and then the um infamous i want to say shovels on the wf family um which actually makes this riser so incredibly stable i mean as far as stabilizers there is a very very light uh setup on here it's just some weird alibaba doesn't cost much what is it called top point archery i just picked this up ages ago it's a dampener but this boy is sitting completely vertically without me doing anything and this is not even enough weight so it, it is the shovels really that make these risers so stable um, for me with the 27 inch draw I do have to say that my preferred setup is the WF19 and the reason for that is that um, this is a 66 inch bow so you wouldn't really call this necessarily a bare bow setup that is super hyper forgiving as much as maybe a 21 a 25 inch riser um, the WF19 gives me a 64 inch setup with long limbs and a 62 with medium limbs. And so for me, the way that I'm using a bow, I think with the less deflex, but with the same amount of shovels and stability in it, I'm getting a huge amount of performance plus, personally with the same limbs out of the WF19. 19 not just because it's two inches shorter but because it is less deflex and it gives me at my short draw like more performance so basically the the point of diminishing returns it being two inches shorter um is outweighed by by the benefit that it really performed like it, it stores my performance out of the limbs it's very difficult for me to say and it's not as on based on science as much as or at least as much as that I've put about a dozen limbs on both of these bows. I get to shoot almost the same arrows just with a little bit of tweaking of brace height and a little bit of tweaking of point weight. I always shoot 340s, either like full length 31 or 30 inches with different inserts and different point weights. Um, this is also what I'm shooting right now out of these, by the way. These are the Easton 6.5 millimeters, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, very, very good arrow for the money. Um, and I chose these on purpose very heavy. They have like 250 grains up front, I think. 
um, they're full length, the 340s, they have like a lot lighted knock. So these are definitely not a bare bow arrow. They're like 600 plus grains. But I wanted to have a little bit slower arrow flight for this video so you can enjoy it. So in conclusion of the riser to get this out of the way, incredible craftsmanship, um, probably some of the best risers on the market, period. Um, the shovels are still not obsolete, even though with all of what other manufacturers might do, they are still really holding true. If you have a, a like, um, if you want to hunt and shoot bare bow, 3D archery or something competitions where you crawl a little bit, um, and your draw is not further than 28 inches, I would say, you can absolutely go for the 21. It's going to be a super nice overall riser. Um, it's heavy, but it's not too heavy if you're like built in a way that you can handle it. Um, you know, no offense, but it's just where it is. Um, if you're over 28 inches of draw length, you uh, you probably also don't have like a performance minus between the 19, the 25, whatever. Um, if you're over 28, if you want to do bearable, I would, I would go to the 25 or even to the 27. Just because there is less deflex, but there is more riser length, the shovels are still on. So it, you know, it kind of outweighs itself. I really like this riser. Um, I really like the color on it. Um, and I just love picking it up and go for a shoot because it is stable. It is very forgiving in the sense of like it, it, it minimizes the mistakes that I make. Hey folks, just a very short plug. The hunting knife that I designed, the pup, is finally out and available. Um, it's been two years. I designed this um, to be a small, big knife. It's uh, got only about six centimeters, a little bit over two and a half inches of blade length, um, but a very ergonomically designed handle that you can hold in a ton of different um, positions. You can actually find a lot of reviews on this knife already on YouTube under the pup. Um, you can take it apart completely. It's made from 14C28N um, Sandvik steel, in fact, um, G10 handles and like uh, stainless steel Torx hardware that you can take it apart and completely um, disinfect it. Comes with a kydex sheath. Um, this one's a little bit dirty. I just brought it back from, from Canada, um, guiding for moose in Alberta and I skinned the entire moose with this one. So um, check it out. I think uh, for all of you hunters, hikers and uh, EEC enthusiasts out there, this is gonna be a great match. Yeah, let's talk limbs, folks. Um, what is this limb? This is the RCS by Bosen. Like I said, I asked them to send that, those to me. Um, they usually come as a more um, bearable oriented limb that has a whole bunch of like glossy writing on it, pretty classic. Um, but they also make a black version of it, like blacked out if you're asking for it. And this is these here um, that I just got completely covered in mud. What's to say about them? Um, they are a foam carbon limb um, with a new type of carbon that they've been testing so I waited for this quite a long time um, they're quite narrow uh, which I like seeing um, they were completely straight out of the box which I cannot say about every recurve limb that I'm receiving um, and even the very very pricey limbs that I sometimes buy or receive um, um, really lack in craftsmanship sometimes um, these are pretty much a factory made Chinese made limb of course um, so I didn't expect much um, and there's not much bling to have on a limb of course especially because you know when it's carbon and foam but what I can say is the following they're very light at 185 grams uh, which is great because that's reducing hand shock and it really maximizes performance they have a very smooth pull they came in pretty much point on on weight because this is their, they're measured on a 25 inch riser 28, which were, they should be 40. So this is a 21, about four pounds up, but reducing it a little bit for my, my lesser draw weight, which is about 27 inches, 27 and a half on a good day. Um, and we're coming 
in right around 44, 45 pounds. Um, but I also have to say crank down on the limb um, pockets. Um, just like one more word about um, the, the WF21 hardware. It's top notch, of course. And another thing I forgot is this little groove back here that makes it a lot easier for me if I'm leaning the bow against the wall. I usually hold it with my foot and completely stabilize it. And I can actually tell if my usually bright strings, that's on purpose, by the way, um, are actually lining up in the middle of the limb and in the middle of the riser and so on and so forth. Um, and that has been spot on. So these limbs didn't take any tuning as far as lateral adjustment. Um, they're very smooth, they have a good performance. Are they a um, MK, um, like a Mark, what, what did I have, like an MKX or whatever they called um, limb? No, they're not, but they're also not 700, 800 bucks, but I think they're coming in about like $340 or something like that. Um, so as far as the quality on these goes, I'm pretty sure that um, they are right in the middle there with all of the other very good carbon foam limbs um, like for example like the maybe the three rivers although I think they're a little bit more expensive and the Lancasters I'm really happy with these I think I'm just gonna keep them blacked out they're gonna be awesome on especially my 17 inch risers because I tried them already on a on a on a both sense 17 inch riser I'm gonna review as well um, and I gotta say that that's a perfect 62 inch hunting setup, right around like 48 pounds or something like that. Great cast, very forgiving, very quiet. Um, so if you wanna put together like a bow that's, you know, right around like the, splitting the difference, if you will, between bear bow and hunting, um, get these limbs and get yourself two risers, maybe one's like something like 25 inches and another riser that's maybe 17 inches and you can use the same limbs for bare bow around 40 pounds and then for um for hunting around 48 50 pounds which is really a great um, way of doing it in my opinion um one more word about why i haven't used the rcx limbs on here that you've seen already in the bosen speed testing video that was very popular where i tried different bosen limbs and especially the very popular i have to say bosen longbow limbs I didn't use the RCX limbs on here because they're like static recurve limbs. And if you're string walking, that means that you're constantly kind of throwing your limbs out of tiller and out of tune, right? Because obviously you're crawling down the string and the upper and the lower limb will basically not arrive at brace at the same time, which is with a carbon foam limb, like a, a conventional, traditional, um, carbon foam recurve limb by the way lateral stability amazing on these um, you will they will forgive that to you right if you are using a, a super curve limb of any kind or a static recurve limb and you throw those out of tune you're playing with your life in my opinion because those limbs are like a racehorse kind of situation and if they are like arriving very very out of tune and out of like timing at brace something horrifying might happen to that bow actually. So I didn't even want to take a chance and I just wanted to, you know, run with a conventional recurve on a bare bow setup. A fixed crawl, by the way, can be tuned into a static recurve limb. That just means you have to work with, obviously working with brace on upper and lower limb, usually, of course, making the lower limb a little bit of like bigger brace height, like turning like getting the tiller bolt a little bit out soften the lower limb because you are gonna do a fixed crawl below the geometric center of the bow if you will and that's gonna require you getting the lower limb a little bit weaker than the upper limb to conclude about the limb basically um, very decent limb very nice quality you can run any um, string material on them um, they're not breaking the bank they're definitely up there, like in the Chinese made um, carbon foam limbs. Um, no thrill, but very nice, decent performance out of these. So I definitely give them a thumbs up, um, a recommendation. And um, yeah, that's about as much as I can say about them. Alright folks, the groups are not quite where they used to be. Um, 
I can only recommend you to check out the push archery and the shot IQ course because I think the form hasn't been really suffering over the last couple of uh, couple months is good like probably six or seven months of me not doing as much archery at all um, I think it's the mental game um, and really getting my my crap together um, thanks for tuning in I hope that these videos are actually fun for you um, I gotta throw out a couple more um, check out woodsmansfinest.com please um, check out these brands if you if you got uh, a little bit intrigued by what I've been telling you today um, I hope that you're enjoying your fall um, and the adventures outside. Um, let me know what you think about these videos again. Thanks to the Push Archery again for like being such a great platform. Of course, rocking the the Alpha Pack uh, with the new belt that's a lot more rigid, and I've been really enjoying this this thing without any gripes. Um, in conclusion of the bow, maybe is there a gripe? Not really. Um, honestly, this is such a solid setup, but I'm aware of like the fact that this is probably a thousand bucks altogether if you're in Europe. The WF21 is going to run you more than a thousand euro by itself after you've done all the conversion rate and all the imports and everything. And so it's still such a great, you know, setup though. And if you're really intrigued by the infamous design and by, by the track record that that thing has, go for it. Um, the limbs are a no brainer in my opinion, um, if you're really looking for a solid limb. And so I, maybe this is a little bit boring to just get like a full on positive conclusion on something, but. That's where it is. There's um, nothing more to say than that I've really been enjoying this thing. And uh, if I'm doing my part right, then this is a quiet, very stable setup that um, also won uh, an archery competition for me here in the area, um, actually uh, before the summer. Cheers, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheerio.